Hey, g'day guys, Kristen Harper here. Welcome to Upsol TV's Humanising Digital Transformation, where we have some conversations with some of New Zealand's best tech minds around technology and the people side of it. So today, talking with uh, Ryan Ashton about qualification. And what I mean by qualification is, as a company that is buying tech, you know, qualifying whether you've found the right company to partner with. And from a salesperson point of view, making sure you're qualifying the, uh, the company to, to make sure you're, you're working on the right track. Because I believe in the sales process that qualification probably is the most key part of it. However, I believe that a lot of people think it's the clothes and all that other stuff that is more shiny. But you do a great job at this, then it becomes a lot easier at the end. What are your thoughts, yeah. Ryan? You are, I agree. And... Um... I think it's in, in both parties' benefit and to qualify well at the beginning. You know, some people, some salespeople believe that they should uh, nurture every opportunity, um, you know, from the point of death back to life, um, or, you know, be friends with everybody and um, you know, make things work. But qualification is really important because uh, it, the key thing for me is that it helps the buyer understand whether this is a good fit for purpose solution or product for them. Um, for the salesperson, it's am I investing time here for good reason or for not? And of course, we've talked about uh, salespeople having numbers and, and their job is to sell. So they've got to be finding those opportunities. So if they're investing way too much time on an opportunity that's actually going to go nowhere, mm. it's not in their best interest. It puts them under pressure. And that's when the potential for bad behaviors to make up for that last time come out. So I think it's, a, I think there's the phrase you said um, before we got on camera was it's in both parties' best interest. And I think mm. that your statement uh, encapsulates my thoughts so beautifully. Um, and here's, a, here's a, um, a good one for you. I come, I come into a role and there was an, a two year open opportunity and there was no real need for qualification because it was a Google search appliance mm. and um, they, they needed it, but they didn't have the, and maybe this isn't the right, the right thing, but they didn't have the compelling need because the existing Google search appliance did not have any limit on it. Mm. One of the original ones didn't have a time or, um, or a license to it, just worked forever. Um, but for two years, um, the organization had not bought. And, um, and this, is, this is probably more to the people side of the qualification. Yeah. So when I went in there, and I am a bit of a nurturer, I can be known to nurture things to death and, and want to help everybody. So um, I've got to be careful about that because it can yeah, put me under pressure um, when I'm in sales. So I have to balance it and I'm aware of it. But um, when I went in there and uh, spoke to the guy, the, the first thing they talked about was the, the, the two people before them, they had tried to put them under pressure with the clothes. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and I just turned around and said, you know, you've talked about putting the elephant on the table before. I just turned around and said, well, you, you don't have a compelling reason to, to have to buy, so you don't have to. The only thing is you've got two units that have got, that'll work forever until they die. Yeah. The problem for you is that one unit has died. So if the other unit dies, then your whole operation stops operating. So that's the only thing for you. And if that one unit that's going right now is working perfectly fine, then you don't have any urgency. So mm -hmm. if there's anything I can do, what do you need to know? What do you want to look at? That will actually make a, that will help. And they're like, oh, well, you know, so we just got on really mm -hmm. well from the beginning and I, I like putting the other on the table, but it, the qualification thing was that people qualification. I didn't didn't hammer them like a. Um, you, you're you're being, you're actually being honest and upfront, and yeah. I think a lot of people don't that, that a lot of buyers aren't used to that. So if you're being upfront about it, it's quite, it's actually quite refreshing because when you go into meetings, as you know, people will generally have their guard up, and they feel I'm going to be sold to, and I, and like I'm like they want to go into shops when somebody comes up and. And, and I get that pressure as well. And I'm thinking I'm in sales myself and I shouldn't be like this, but I get that. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm okay. That's exactly yeah. how they are as well. So I think when yeah. you are honest about it and you're saying, well, this is what the reality is, then they're going to open up to you a lot more about where they're really at. Um, yeah. and, and that enables a qualification of the, yeah. the, you probably really want to focus on, which is around the qualification of the fit. Yeah, and um, you, you're not going to get those discussions if you don't have the relationship or the rapport. But um, you know, the coming back to the detail of qualification mm. is 
the salesperson needs to understand what the problem is or what the opportunity is or whatever it is, whatever label we want to put on it um, and whether it can uh, be a fit. And one of, the, one of my favorite sayings that I use is I talk about the good, the bad and the ugly. So when we get through the detail of qualification, mm. I'll sit there and say, say to the client, say, look, the good, the bad and the ugly is, you know, 70% we're good. Mm. Uh, 20% we're bad, but it's not the worst, but ugly, this is the problem. So I, li- I like that. Be, I actually like that approach. I might actually use that. Thank you, mate. <laughs> well, I, I tell them what's not going to work. Yeah. And I say, and I'll actually say, I know another product, which is, um, you know, and I think it's probably... 80, um, 80, you say it's 80 good, which is better than my 70, but the other 20% is ugly. Um, or this or that, you know, try and get them around and say, but I'm more, you know, I can introduce you to the guy, you can have a chat with him. And quite often they will. And what it does is it helps them actually buy what they want. And, and it builds I, trust and in off case and practice. Yeah. yeah. And it builds trust so in that, that you. Yeah. Because what will happen and what does happen when you do that is that. When a need comes up for you, you'll be the first person I get in contact with. If they're talking with any of their contacts that are looking for what you do, you'll be the first one they'll introduce you to because you don't get a lot of people that are that. that I think what tends to happen, especially in tech, and I see this right now, is a lot of organisations, we have this one product, so we're going to sell this to you and you need to fit your processes around our product for it to work for you. Whereas yeah. um, you know, with Upsell New Zealand, with what we're doing, We've got a number of different things that we can bring in, uh, different offerings that we can bring to solve problems. But if it doesn't work from the start, then exactly what you said, we recommend so and so. Because at the end of that, it's no point trying to sell them into something if you know it's never going to work. Because in the longer run, it's going to cost you, it's going to cost your reputation, and it's going to cost them their time and their money as well. So I think qualification is, is, is key, and it's about asking those hard questions. and make i'm not, not not saying making them uncomfortable but asking those uncomfortable questions yeah so i think that, that's a really good thing it's not about making someone feel uncomfortable but it's asking the uncomfortable mm. questions so you can get to the the nitty-gritty of is there any hope in hell that this product is the best fit for this um purpose and if it's not what is mm. and like yeah you know, i've walked out of a place and, and not uh, and get basically given away the sale but within weeks, I've had four to five phone calls from the, their mates who have said, hey, Kristen told me that you yeah. did this and this, this for them. Um, I, I need to know who's a good operator to do with mm. this. And it might not even be something that's even close mm. to what I sell, but I get asked who's a good operator, who's yeah. a good this, or what do you think here? And sometimes I don't have the answer. So I just say, look, I really don't know enough about that area to, to help. But um, if I point you towards this person, they might be a bit closer and then you can keep following your nose towards mm. the, the goal. Yeah, cool. Uh, and yeah, the, the number of messages and you just, they just keep coming and you get to, you know, work with the ones that yeah. uh, fit your budget, I guess. And it, you made the point again, is that if you have a good fit and you deliver a good thing, they're happy. Mm. If you, if you push a product into something that's not a good fit, you don't get a great result. You're always on the back foot and the relationship. Yeah, exactly. So qualify, qualify <laughs> hard. Hey, cheers, Ron. We'll speak to you. Uh, speak to you in the next one. Cheers, buddy. Thanks, mate. Yep.